Hi. This is the setup for the center gear um, spindle design. Um, this is the most complicated one that there is. This is the hardest setup. But I thought it's really versatile and I thought it's worth going over. So this is the plain baseboard that you see. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on a 150 uh, turntable. That just goes on like that. Then we're going to take a 50 gear and put it on the outside rail. And instead of using what we would normally do, one of the smaller one inch screws, we're going to use a two inch screw because it has to reach through a couple different gears. So what you can do is this has the bearing on it already. You just slide it up under, put your hand underneath to hold it, put the gear on. Now for the center gear, we want the center gear, which in this case is going to be a 34, to be immobilized. So the way we do that is we put a washer on, then we put the 34 on, then instead of doing um, finding my bearings. <laughs> Instead of putting a regular bearing on, we only put a one thickness bearing on, and that's to keep it in position. We put a brass washer on, and then we tighten it down a little bit, not too much. So what happens now is this outer gear can spin, but this gear, the center gear, is going to be held in place. So right now we're ready to put a drive gear on because this is going to be really complicated and we won't be able to drive it with our hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a 60 on and again we just want to slip this guy down through the hole, support it from the bottom, put the two washers on, put the washer on and we're going to go in so it meshes with the turntable. We don't want to be too tight and we don't want to be too loose. It's kind of the, the Goldilocks thing. It has to be just right. If it's too loose, there'll be too much play in the system. If it's too tight, it'll bind. So we just want to find a place that's just right and tighten this guy down. Now we're ready to go back to this guy and again, we're going to adjust it so it's just right. Not too tight and not too loose. So now as we turn this guy around, this gear around, everything moves. Now we're ready to put the 40 gear on. This is the one that's going to be rotating around the outside. And so what we're going to do is just, again, this is the quick release. We just want to slide it, the gear and angle, the screw head at an angle and bring it up vertical, support it from the bottom, put the two washers on, and then find the place where, oh, we want to, I'm sorry, we want to put a regular washer on to space it up so it doesn't hit when it goes over that gear. We're going to put the, the bearing back on, put the 40 in place so it meshes just nicely with the 34. And again, we're going to put a brass washer this time because we don't have room for the wood ones. Lock that down, and we should be good to go at this point. So, one of the questions that people have asked is, what's a drive gear? Well, a drive gear is any gear that you manage to, to put a screw on that you actually drive with. So, in this case, the drive gear is just like that. We can't really drive the guy with this this thing because it goes around. No, oh, let me just I used the wrong one. So we this is a two inch. We want to have that be the one that drives the the connector rod. So I just changed it to there and now we'll put a different drive gear on. Different screw on for the drive gear. This kind of becomes second nature and you just play with it. So that's what's going on here. So we're really kind of ready. The only thing is now we need to put some washers, some bearings on so that um, when we put the connector rods on, they float over top and it doesn't crash into anything. 
Now here we have a connector rod, but the problem with this is it's going to go much longer than we can have. It's just too long for the connector rod length. So we have extenders. This is one of the extenders. And so right here in the second hole in, we will put a three-quarter inch screw. It could be a one-inch screw too. And we'll tighten that down. So that gives us room now for the connector rod to, to be at their extreme. Now you notice we don't have anything on the right hand side, left hand side. What we need there is the fulcrums. This is, both of these can be fulcrum slots or gear slots, but so right here we have a three inch. We're going to slide it down. Going to bring it up to position 18. And then we have the fulcrum slides right here. It's this little hat that sits on this guy. So at this point, we're really pretty ready to start seeing what we can do. I'm going to put a piece of paper on. We just hold it on with tape. I usually use four sides. You can try two sides. It doesn't take a lot of stress as it's driving around. And I usually just split the tape in two. And you can also reuse the tape. Now right here, we have the rod set up. Uh, right now, we have it set up at three. It's pretty much 90 degrees, and this part of the of the gear of the the washer is set to nine. This one's about five and a half. So we're just going to put this guy in the second hole. Slide this over the top. Click the pen and start it off. And see what happens. Now I didn't put a weight on this because as the, the pen holder goes out further, sometimes it doesn't need it. But if it does skip, which it's doing a little bit now, I could have just put a weight on. Let me go get a weight. Here's a weight and it just lives on top of this place. So that can give it a little bit more substance and hopefully it won't skip then. Sometimes it takes a while for the pattern to emerge. Here we can see that it's a three, three point coming because the main drive gear is a 50 and the table is a 150. But then it does all this other stuff because of the gear, the 40 gear going around the 34. So we pretty much have the pattern emerging now. Other things we can try to do, if we just um, flip the paper over, leave all this set up the same, reuse the tape, and reuse the paper. So we'll go over here. and. One of the interesting what-ifs is what happens if we take the fulcrum point and slide it from 18 where it is now, bring it down to let's say 15. How does that change the pattern? Again, we're going to just put it on the second hole, slide the connector rod over the fulcrum, and start it up again. So moving it from 18 to 15 has shrunken in that center part and expanded the, the kind of flowers that are at the edge of it. So it's a pretty radical difference for only three units on of moving the fulcrum.
Oh, I'm sorry. You're still watching. I'm still just getting into it. Never mind. Anyway, so that's the pattern that we did. This is the hardest setup that there is, and it is hard. Um, but a lot of what ifs. Um, what happens if you change this 34 to the 40 and flip it around? What happens if you change, instead of using a 50, if you change it to a, 40, a 49 or a 47? And there's also, with the deluxe kit, there's 108. So that gives you even more room to put more gears on. So there's just a whole lot of what ifs. And that's what it's about. So that was the starting point when the fulcrum was at 18. And this is when we moved it down, the fulcrum down to 15. You can also put the fulcrum further out and see what that does. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.